Hey everyone, Larissa J here from larissaj.com and welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, stop what you're doing and make sure that you subscribe so that you can get all the updates on all of my forthcoming videos. Today I just want to share some encouragement with you. Um, I've been studying first and second Samuel and I just wanted to share what I've been reading. So the topic that I want to talk about today is that God has a plan. No matter what you're dealing with right now, no matter what you're going through, you, no matter what the situation looks like, it's important that we're always mindful of the fact that God does have a plan. Nothing takes him by surprise. And you guys hear me say this pretty regularly because it's true. Nothing takes God by surprise. He's God. And all of these things that we're experiencing right now, things that we go through in life, he foresaw them before we were even born. He has a plan. And one of my favorite Bible verses that I like to go back to um, and review is Romans 8, 28, which says that we know that he calls all things to work together for the good of those that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Um, what that means is that, you know, everything that takes place and the things that we experience and the things that we go through, he causes those things to work together for our good. And though that includes situations that may not always seem good, he still causes them to work together for our good. Now, of course, the end of that verse does say, um, for those that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So that's not every single person in the world, but it is those who are um, in relationship with him, those who love him and those who are called. So with that being said, um, it's important to remember that he has a plan. God has a plan for you. One person in particular from the Bible um, that I want to highlight today is David. Um, he's a great example of the fact that God had a plan for him and um, God's plan and God's purpose prevailed for him in his life because David was yielded and submitted to God. He had a relationship with God. He sought God um, in all of his decision making and God's purpose and plan prevailed in his life. In 1 Samuel, it starts out with um, a prophet Samuel who um, initially had anointed Saul as king. And, um, you know, Saul was disobedient and he did not follow the instructions of the Lord. Um, and as a result, um, you know, he was told that he would no longer be king and, you know, things just didn't go, <laughs> you know, the way that they could have gone had he been obedient. So as a result, Samuel then was um, instructed of the Lord to go and seek um, to anoint a, another person as king. And <clears throat> so he was led to um, Jesse's home. And Jesse had a bunch of, you know, different sons and Samuel was there. You know, he sees these different sons of Jesse and, and he's like, surely, like, surely this is the one. He looks like he's he's fit to be the king. Um, and that's where the scripture talks about how the Lord tells Samuel that, you know, men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And how oftentimes we as people look at other people and, and use what we see to determine whether or not they're deserving of something or if they're qualified for something you know we look at oh well, this person's attractive this person has a lot of money or they're very strong or they're smart or they're charismatic or whatever the case is um but you know god looks at the heart and so that that's what what happened here when samuel was at jesse's house um he saw you know jesse's sons and you know thought hey like you know he should be you know i think this is the one um, and the Lord was like, no, he's not. He's not the one that I've chosen. He's not the one that I've appointed for this assignment because I'm looking at the heart, you know. So anyway, so he, you know, look, you know, went through all the sons. The Lord said, no, it's, it's none of these. Samuel says, so Jesse, do you have any other sons? Is this everybody? Turns out Jesse did have another son, David. David at that time was a shepherd. So he was out in the field with the sheep and the goats. And that stands out to me because it did not stop what God had planned for him. You know, the other sons were lined up, you know, before Samuel with this opportunity to be anointed as king. And it would have, from a natural perspective, seemed like they were in the right place, 
you know, at the right time, so to speak. But that's not what God had planned for them. You know, they, you know, they did have other assignments and other things that they did in life. But it was David that God had chosen to be anointed as king. And that's the amazing thing about God is that little details that we as humans might think could get in the way or deter us. Those little details don't slow God down. So David was out in the field with the sheep and the goats, probably had no idea what was going on. You know, he's out minding his business, doing what he was assigned to do at that time, what he was supposed to be doing at that time. So for him, he was in the right place at the right time. And him being outside in the field with the sheep and the goats did not prevent what God had for him to take place. So just uh, so Samuel says to Jesse, like, is this is this, is this it? Are these all your sons? Jesse's like, no, I've got, you know, I've got another son. It's David. And so that's when um, David is brought before Samuel. And Samuel knows this is the one. He hears the spirit of the Lord tell him, like, this is the one that is to be appointed as, as king. Now, with David, just because that happened in that moment, it, it did not automatically change things. And, oh, well, he's the king the next day. That's not how it worked. So he was anointed um, with oil as king. However, you know, there was still this process that he went through. He killed Goliath. And we also know that um, he made his way up to work alongside the king. So um, he went from being a shepherd to working alongside the king. There were times in the scripture where it talks about how Saul had, um, he was being tormented with spirits. And David would come and play his harp for Saul. Um, and so he, there were things that he did in service to the king. So he went from being a shepherd to being um, of service to the king and then things kind of changed Saul kind of had the spirit of jealousy and decided he was going to go and and try to kill David and um, there were many times where he tried to kill David and David did have uh, opportunities where he was able to kill Saul as well but he still chose not to he said that he didn't want to kill the Lord's anointed because at that time Saul was still reigning as king and so he just had this humble um, spirit not only humble but he was also very reverent of God and what God had put in place and God blessed him for that because of course um, after many many events took place you know Saul did die and David did become king he became well known he even had this encounter with God where God promised that he would make his name famous and of course we all have heard of King David so did David experience trials tribulations challenges absolutely he had people um, at times in his life who were his enemies people who were seeking to kill him there were times where he was running for his life there were times where he was in battle but he was committed to his relationship with the Lord. He was committed to doing what the Lord instructed him to do and being obedient to what the Lord instructed him to do. And as a result, God's purpose and plan was fully manifested in his life. And he was able to go from glory to glory, so to speak. He went from being a shepherd with sheep and goats in a field to being a king, which is... An amazing thing when you think about it but the fact of the matter is that God had a plan for David and that plan came into full fruition because of David's obedience and submission to God and his purpose and his plan for his life and so I say all of this to say that it doesn't matter the situation that you're in it doesn't matter what's going on right now what the situation looks like um, when God has a plan for your life and you're in full surrender and submission to that plan, that plan will be fully manifested in his perfect time. And so things can look one way one day and they can look completely different the next. You think about David, he went from being a shepherd to being a king, two different things, but that was a part of God's plan. And so God has a plan for your life. Do not allow this season to discourage you. Do not allow this season to defeat you. Do not allow this season to um, make you want to throw in the towel and give up. Um, and do not allow this season to um, cause you to pull away from God. Rather, this is the time to draw near to God and grow closer to God. Um, and just remember that he does have a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. He has a purpose. And when you love him, you know, he's going to cause all these things to work out together 
for your good. So be encouraged. Know that God does have a plan. Do not quit. Do not give up. Do not be discouraged. But continue to keep the faith. Continue to stay strong. Continue to stand in the word. Continue to pursue and seek God and watch what he does with your life. Hopefully this video was a blessing to you. Give me a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.